Hello guys, so we are now in Brussels during CCC at Parallel Summit, which is organized by Stay Network. And here with you Anna Kutava, co-founder of Coins Telegram, and our guest, uh, Jay Zog, uh, who is co-founder of Stay, which is uh, the first uh, uh, layer one blockchain, which is specific, uh, uh, industry specific for uh, accelerating the um, speed of the centralized trading. So great to have you here. Thanks for having me on. So can you tell about your journey and background? How do you, do you discover crypto and blockchain first? Mm, yeah. So I initially found out about crypto back in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting. So I was in I was in college back then, and I was studying computer science. And people that are a year older than me that are graduating, um, they were getting offers from places like Facebook. And Facebook would give people 100K signing bonuses to mm -hmm. join their company at the time. So my friends, they took their signing bonuses, and then they put them into Ether back when it was at $40 per token. Mm -hmm. So, and this was right before the entire 2017 cycle just kind of went maniacal in a way. Um, so yeah, I just saw them write it up. And then they started like taking more aggressive positions and I kind of saw everything from a secondhand account of like how crazy mm -hmm. crypto can be from a financial side. Um, that was my initial foray into crypto. And I think a lot of people go through a similar process where it's like first it's financial and then afterwards they start seeing it from more of the technical side. Mm -hmm. um, so 2018, I moved to uh, Menlo Park after college and that time, my roommate, he was starting a crypto company. So he was actually going through Binance Labs at the time. And then I ended up tinkering with a couple of different projects together with him. And, Which company was that? Uh, that's Marlin Protocol. So, I mean, they, uh, they're they live right now. Um, and yeah, so I ended up seeing everything kind of from a secondhand account over there as well. And that kind of led me to become much more bullish on uh, crypto from more of like the technical standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I mean, afterwards, I was working at Robinhood, joined pretty early. So I guess for any viewers that might not be so super familiar. Topic, so. so I was working on a lot of different things. I joined pretty early, but I did not end up working on this stuff. Yeah, I mean, when I joined, it was like, when I interviewed, it was two houses across the street from one another. So they literally took the bedroom from one of the homes, and that's where like, people were working from. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was quite the journey over there. I was there when the GameStop saga happened. So I don't know how. Yeah, how listeners, uh, how familiar with with that, but um, basically that's when the entire like uh, retail was buying GameStop and then Robinhood turned off buys on GameStop. The entire country was outraged, and it just felt like there was a couple of people in a room that were making decisions. No one else had any ability to uh, influence those decisions for like those games and like to know about those decisions. And that made me a lot more focused on the idea of trustless. Like, you shouldn't need to trust Flash to be able to verify that yourself. And that's why initially we wanted to build something like Robinhood and then build it in place. That led us down the entire journey to that we need. So, initially, yeah, initially we wanted to build our own. We were like, okay, where are we going? Uh, where are we going to get the kind of skills we want? So, okay, well, there's no Where, like, they might make a mistake. Um, and then there's also the philosophical side where. 
first, like they don't feel morally like morally correct um moving over to a new execution environment because it feels like they're abandoning something that like they have a pretty strong belief in. And I think this is fundamentally because the EVM is not just a tech stack. The EVM is an entire ecosystem and it's all the tooling, all the developers, all the mindshare, like everything else that comes with it. Um, and that's why I think it's like just extremely uh, difficult to get people to move. So um, that's when we realized, okay, we want to help scale the EVM. Um, question then, or we wanted to focus on the EVM. Like then the question is how can we, like what is the biggest issue right now with the Ethereum merchant issue? Mm -hmm. um, and the biggest limitation was just a lack of throughput. So like Ethereum L1, any roll up built on top, they weren't really able to get more than 50 transactions per second. Mm -hmm. so that's not really a large amount of traffic that they're able to process. So as a result of that, um, what we decided is, okay, let's start scaling the EVM by paralyzing it. Mm -hmm. And that was the announcement we put out last November, um, Savvy to the first paralyzed EVM. Um, that went live at the end of May. And then actually, time of this recording yesterday, um, we had the airdrop go live. So everything has been going just incredibly well for that. And now there's like a ton of ecosystem activity that started to happen as well. So it's been fun. Yeah, and today's is all about the layer one. Well, uh, which is the idea of uh, parallelized execution for us. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not live yet uh, publicly, but they raise even much more than you. So what are your differences? Uh, you have yeah, I think the biggest difference is a philosophical difference between how we approach building. Um, our approach is very much a Silicon Valley approach. That's mm -hmm. where our entire team came from. And it's ship fast, get user feedback, and iterate based off that. Because we think that's the only realistic way to grow a company. Um, it's interesting because I think back in the days, like Ethereum went down the same route, and then there's other projects like Cardano that choose to go, choose to go in a different route. Um, so on also kind of went down the same exact route. And in general, I think if you try to aim for something that's like, like you have to decide at a point that like something is good enough, shift that and get user feedback. And I think that's the approach that typically results in companies that end up doing well. Um, with that being said, I mean, they've been crushing it. And I think it's just incredibly mm -hmm. exciting to see that like this vertical has like two to three pretty big players. and um, if the other players in that vertical are doing well, that ends up being better for you as well. So I think it shows that there is a product market fit. Exactly. So there's this idea that like a lifting, a lifting tide, a rising tide lifts all boats, and I definitely think that's the case for any kind of like infrastructure like this. Um, mm -hmm. So we're we're excited to see what Monad ends up doing. We wish them all the best. And can you tell about the applications being built on Stay Network currently? Uh, what yeah. use cases you're guiding? Yeah, so in terms of the applications that are live, it's basically every primitive that matters. There's like Dragonswap, which is a DEX, there's CA Finance, which is uh, Lending Marcus, there's Silo, which is LSTs. Silo is also expanding into like MEV distribution mechanism. So there's essentially all the basic primitives that are live right now. Um, the bigger question now is like, okay, what should be there to, like what is going to be the future killer application? And I think that is what I'm most excited about in the next six to nine months. Like, now that V2 is live, it gives developers a chance to really experiment. And then from there, we'll start seeing um, use cases that have a chance of finding more PMF. Uh, what I think is probably going to work on, say, that cannot be possible on Ethereum L1 or other types of like lower performance infrastructures is going to be tied to something that needs verifiability um, that can happen with like a high amount of transaction volume. Um, so examples over here would be a central limit order book. And you just can't do that on Ethereum. Um, you would be able to do that on say. Another, another example would be a game. And with a game, you can have a lot of actions start happening on chain. Because mm -hmm. the way that most crypto games are built right now is just almost entirely off chain. Mm -hmm. And they have like a very small amount of stuff that happens on chain. So mm -hmm. that would be another example. Another example here but would be social. Uh, you're only for trading apps, but you can actually. Yeah, we're not only for trading apps. So, ah, say okay. that fully so general you are now purpose. Yeah, so around 2022 is when we decided that like we wanted to become more general purpose because that's mm -hmm. the, like trading is involved in everything and that's when we decided, that, okay, we're going to start becoming just more general mm -hmm. purpose because fundamentally if you think about crypto, like the biggest use case for crypto right now that has actually found Tiana is the ability to exchange digital assets and that is pervasive in every single thing that gets built on crypto. So that's how we realized it doesn't make much sense to only have like a very narrow type of focus. like. We are general purpose at the end of the day if we're focused on trading. And, uh, well, I saw you have even some uh, meme coins uh, at the <laughs> So, what's yeah. your opinion on meme coins? I think it's really, really interesting to see that activity happening. I'm like just very excited about meme coins in general because 
I felt like last cycle there were NFTs yeah. that are like the mechanism for community building. I think now the, that community building mechanism is meme coins. And what's better about meme coins is it's much more fractionalizable. Like previously, there'd be like 10,000 NFTs and like the concept of like fractionalized NFTs didn't really ever seem to fully take off. Um, I think with meme coins, it's much easier for people to get in and like be part of this broader community. So I think it's a better community building tool. Um, I don't like how speculative it has become. And I think being speculative is fine, but then founders just like launch it and then like rug the project by like taking out all the liquidity. I think that's an extremely predatory and like negative mechanism. But I'm like excited to see higher quality projects that are able to build stronger communities. And then from there, I think there's like even cooler avenues you can go down with stuff like 404. So like with 404s, you can take an NFT basically and fractionalize it. And then it can be traded on both like an NFT marketplace and a DEX simultaneously. And like the opposite of that can also apply where like you take a meme coin and then you can have discrete units of that meme coin and then people can be holders and then they might get additional benefits if they have like 10,000 units of a meme coin or something. So I think the design space over there is like quite large. Yeah. Do you invest yourself into any meme coin? I have stayed away from investing into uh, more volatile stuff in the past couple of years. I have gotten wrecked quite a few times on both traditional financial markets and on crypto markets. So I take much more conservative positions now. Like, uh, yeah, by not going okay. into meme coins. And we talked to you knew all about crypto back in 2017. So <laughs> did you invest into crypto oh, then? Or I, I lost a good chunk of money back in 2017. It was e initially it was on easy mode because like mm -hmm. whatever you did, it was just like up and to the right. But then afterwards, like yeah, the I forget the phrase for it, like the cards came crashing down and then I was just like left holding and it's interesting because I was left holding Bitcoin back then I'm like okay that's not too bad but then I just went to poker websites and lost it all on poker websites and it was like 3k back in 2019 so yeah definitely learned some lessons around risk management from that. Currently do you invest into any altcoins or Bitcoin? Is yeah I mean there's a few different altcoins that I've invested in but most of my most of uh, what I hold right now is like I mean, basically everything is just tied to say. Like maybe can you share some other of your altcoin picks besides say? Uh, a few altcoin picks. I mean, does Solana even count as an altcoin now? If so, uh, I, I mean, guess so. <laughs> yeah, so I'd go with Solana then. Why uh, are you bullish on Solana? Well, I think they were the first ones that really were able to craft that at least perception of high performance infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And I do think that is a pretty massive, uh, massive unlock for happening on chain. Mm -hmm. Like if you, you can't just accept like a 50 transaction per second environment like people in Ethereum uh, were kind of doing at the start. So I think that that is like the fact that they were able to pull that off. I think that was fantastic. And that's why I'm really excited about the future for Solana. I think the um, thing that could have been done better is like having the EVM as a first class citizen over there. Um, because if you don't have EVM support, it's really difficult to start getting traction. Do you see any... Uh... Uh, balance of cooperation with Solana, or are they more competitive for you? I think at the end of the day, you can always collaborate on open source projects. Mm -hmm. Like it, we're all building similar technology. Like there's different trade-offs that we make along like the trade-off curve, but there's a lot of ways we can work together from perhaps like the technical side or maybe the community building side. But yeah, definitely you can collaborate. With them. And as well, do you have any investment strategy, and how long do you think this uh, bull market will last? I have, I've learned that it's pretty impossible for me to time the markets. So what I do instead is if I were to be investing right now, I would just pick some things that I believe in for the longer term, like a five, tri five, 10 year time horizon and primarily invest into those assets. And ideally just like forget about them and like not look back, um, like definitely not check my portfolio every couple of hours around them. So do you see yourself with the whole life uh, in crypto? Building? Yeah, I mean, I. I haven't really thought too much about the future. There's just been so many things happening every single day that have been making my life pretty exciting. Um, but I think realistically, the kind of skill set that I've developed is being a crypto founder. Um, working on Say has been a ton of fun. I don't see myself like stopping that anytime soon. Um, yeah, hard to say where things will go. And can you share maybe your recent partnership? So you recently partnered uh, OpenSea mm -hmm. for allowing trading uh, on Say for benefits. Yeah. I think OpenSea has been the biggest one that has been publicly announced. In the next week, there will be another pretty major partnership that will be announced. Um, actually, two other pretty major partnerships. So, uh, yeah, I, I won't comment on that right now, but that will be there probably by the time this is released on YouTube. Okay, we'll be waiting for more news <laughs> from you. And uh, maybe you can share any other upcoming plans for the development of Say. Yeah, so one pretty major thing that just happened was the airdrop. 
So there was a second airdrop that the Safe Foundation uh, decided to give out right now. And after that airdrop was distributed yesterday, I think that just led to a lot more activity on the ecosystem. Because interestingly, instead of selling the token, what people did instead was they were quite bullish on the ecosystem. So they decided to start reinvesting it back into the ecosystem. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think there's going to be more incentive mechanisms that the foundation will probably have planned out for the next six to nine months. So I think anyone that's interested, I definitely recommend um, playing around with the SAE ecosystem and seeing which kind of applications are fun for you. Okay, so there will be more airdrops in future? Uh, I'm not the decision maker around that, so I can't really comment over there. Okay, so we'll uh, follow your development. <laughs> thank you for sharing uh, your thoughts and expertise with us. Perfect, thank you for having me on.